Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, Alpaca uses gamification technology to help teachers to identify literacy challenges at an early age, thus allowing interventions to be implemented at a faster rate. Joe Fernandez and Dr. Cullum Fallon from Alpaca join us now to outline the transformative impact of this literacy assessment tool. Joe, start by talking to us about Alpaca and the issue that it aims to address. Yeah, interesting question, Carl. This project started off as something called a commercialisation research project with Trinity College and the Marino Institute. And the idea behind that Enterprise Ireland funded project is they believe that one of the academic PhDs has identified a problem and it might be worthwhile exploring if that PhD can be turned into a solution. So when I came in, the problem that we had, uh, that had been identified was how do you identify children who are four years of age as to whether they may go on to struggle to read? And could that be done before they can actually read print? And what Dr. Jennifer O'Sullivan had developed was a paper-based assessment for four-year-olds to identify children who may go on to struggle before they can read, purely by listening to sound. So I learned ABC, my daughter learned a book. By setting a child's ability to identify and work with those initial sounds through playing a simple evidence-based game on an iPad, we discovered that that was a problem worth solving, that we could actually assess children at that early age. And from the research we did during that research project, we found that over 85% of the 30 schools that we were researching across five countries were not assessing children at four years of age, meaning the kids had to go on to struggle when they read, had to show problems and show signs of failure before suitable supports were put in place. So Joe, how does Alpaca actually work? Well, it's a simple evidence-based game. It's played on iPads in schools, so at three times during the year, that's September, January and the end of June, the kids are gathered into groups of about six and they're going to play a game on the iPad or a tablet device for 20 minutes. They have no comprehension that they're actually getting a test or getting screens. They think they're playing the game. They actually queue up to go and play alpaca. At the end, we do the heavy lifting for the teachers. We interpret the data and feed the information back to them in real time so they can see exactly where kids are on their learning journey. Sometimes it's looking forward for things that are highly predictive of future reading failure. Sometimes it's looking back at things they've been taught to see how well they've acquired that knowledge. What we're doing is rounding out that picture and allowing the school to then put suitable interventions in place to support those kids before they actually failed or got into trouble later on. So 20 minute game, instantaneous results. Teachers get the information they need, identifying kids very, very, very early. And Cullum, how will you use AI artificial intelligence as part of this solution? Yeah, so the plan is with AI, at the moment, we, we're gathering huge amounts of information on students and we hope to gather more from parents and from teachers using different sources. So we'll be basically painting a picture of what the student looks like. And what AI will do for us is it will look at that picture in detail and so be able to find patterns within the picture with a, an early screener, we can identify very early what a later version of that picture will look like. And this is all done by AI. It, it can project into the future for us and it can compare against massive data ranges to help us again a better understanding. Joe, you've talked us through the process in terms of what's involved in the assessment, but what happens when the assessment has been completed? Okay, so the piece for us is the, the few ways that we use the information. First of all, we want to give the teachers in real time evidence to make evidence-based decisions, where to deploy their very scarce learning support. And the teacher dashboard contains that information. But because we're assessing early literacy skills, which are highly predictive of future dyslexia, they can then put targeted in place for those children and oftentimes those children appear in groups and they might want to do a specific work in groups with those children. When they put that intervention in place, they'll then remeasure the response to that intervention using Alpaca after a defined period of time and actually after those, after two response to intervention cycles, they're now beginning to gather that evidence base with which to begin to say there's actually an issue with this child and our teaching isn't being able to assist. So maybe we need to look at additional support from learning support or education psychologists to help them. So we give that evidence in real time to make resourcing decisions and intervention decisions. 
And Joe, from your research into the market, what percentage of children potentially have literacy problems? From the information we have at the moment, we're showing roughly between 12 and 20 percent, which would be quite indicative of the 10 to 20 percent that may go on to have dyslexia later in life, but typically wouldn't be diagnosed until 10 years of age and older. At this stage, some of the things that we're seeing could be put down to the fact that the child could be having an off day, there could be something going on at home, as opposed to being some neurobiological piece underlining it. But we triage those kids, we assess it multiple times of the year, we measure the response to interventions put in place, and we're rounding out that picture for the teacher as to whether this is actually an early literacy issue, whether the child is having a bad day, or is it something that needs to be investigated further with the evidence that they're beginning to gather within the system. And from your experience to date, when Alpaca provides recommendations in relation to post-assessment, have the schools got the resources to be able to act on them? Oh, that's a great question. I think from a helicopter view, principals are, are in a system where they might not have necessarily all the resources they need to be able to meet every child at their point of need. So what do you do if you suddenly have information earlier? If you intervene with a child at age five, rather than remediate at age nine, it takes four times less resources to achieve a similar, if not better, result. So we've seen over 80% of our infant principals and schools moving additional learning support into the infant classrooms because they now have evidence to understand where to deploy those scarce resources in a more time-saving, efficient and targeted manner. So they're seeing better outcomes, they're seeing less withdrawals by the end of your infant. And a withdrawal for the, for the listeners is when the child is actually taken from the classroom and they're, and they're working one-to-one with a learning support teacher as opposed to interventions happening in the classroom. Schools are seeing less of that and that a more inclusive environment happening. So I suppose one of the, the plus sides of this is actually early identification empowers early intervention and target support and that has a knock-on effect of saving huge amounts of resources for the school. And Joe, how receptive have both teachers and schools been to this new tool? We were slightly trepidant at the beginning because we're, we're not a huge organisation and we don't have deep pockets. We've been very much reliant on Enterprise Ireland uh, supporting us on our journey to date and we have to big shout out and thank you to them for everything they've done so far. So we, we spun out, as they say, of the university last summer. We started standing on our own two feet on the, the 1st of September last year. We will screen over 10,000 junior infants in Ireland for their emergent early literacy skills. There's about 60,000 junior infants, just to put that in context. And by September, we'll be screening one in every five infants, infants in the country with this technology because it's learner-centric, it's engaging. You don't need to be a domain expert in order to be able to use it. Time efficiency and savings. The wins are, are multiple for the schools. But I think one of the massive pieces we've seen is by January in junior infants, the schools are being able to have evidence-based conversations with parents, be that news good, indifferent, or maybe this point out something they're seeing. I think that's really building a bond of trust with the parents and the educators. You know, we are looking out for the children early. We are seeing things. We are doing things. And we're going to keep and communicate with you on a regular basis. And here's some things you can do at home because within the system there's recommendations for parental involvement as well. So the, the feedback to date has been absolutely overwhelming. Um, there's about 500 schools that have signed up uh, as part of a trial now in May and June of this year. And Colm, Alpaca is one of 11 startups that have been selected for UCD's AI Accelerator programme. What do you hope to get out of this programme? Yeah, well, fundamentally what we want or what we need is uh, document, a piece of paper that will define our AI strategy. We want to diagnose early a child with dyslexia within 24 months and AI is going to help us to get there. It's going to help us to to, um, provide a dashboard that educational psychologists can work with so that they can give that diagnosis quickly. And so, you know, I was talking to Joe about it beforehand. We could be like sitting in the bedroom trying to work it out, but realistically, it's about going and speaking to people. And UCD, there's a great network. We've met the, the 10 other participants, and we've met uh, a, a lot of the people who work in UCD, and there's a great network set up there. So, yeah, really looking forward to connecting with all of these people and, and a lot of the researchers across UCD to help us to get that document ready and set up so that we can, yeah, to diagnose their first child with dyslexia within 24 months. 
And Joe, what revenue model have you decided to adopt for this business? At the moment, we're trying to keep it simple. Um, I'm, I'm former head of commercial technologies with Solens Publishers, and I've worked at the European Bank of Reconstruction Development, all sorts of different projects. We do not want one single child here to fall through the gaps. And in order to do that, we want to make this accessible and you know, usable by every school in the country and internationally as well. So at this stage, the, the schools pay simply 10 euros per junior infant per year. So is Ireland merely a test bed for this business? Yeah, Ireland is certainly the test bed for, for what we're doing in the UK in September. And we've also just signed an agreement for Ireland starting in Canada in 2025. So we've international outreach programmes, really strong and positive inflow of Irish international partners. I think one of the things that we've done well and we're going to continue to do well is to make sure that we respect and reflect the lives of the educators and make sure that the quality of service that we offer them exceeds anything they could expect. So we have to make sure that we, we ramp up our engagement in the marketplace in, in, the, in the right timely manner. But UK is the next stop in September for Alpaca. And what are your growth plans for Alpaca over the next three years? Over the next three years, by 28, we aim to screen 2 million infants a year for early literacy skills. Up to 40% of those children will go on to take the early dyslexia screener by the middle of senior infants. And by the end of senior infants, by the age of approximately six years of age, up to 20% of those children, it will be possible to diagnose by that age whether the dyslexia is, is um, in existence or not for those children. So 2 million is the number that we have in our, in our minds right now for 2028 in terms of the number of those who want the screen. And as we've talked about in, in the public forums before, this is an AI model that we're building over time that can be transposed into other neurodiverse areas. So while we're starting with dyslexia today, we're moving into dyscalculia, into dyspraxia, ASD and other neurodiverse areas as well. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Joe Fernandez and Dr. Colum Fallon from Alpaca. And it would be great to see this tool being rolled out in schools across the country and that children will get access to the necessary interventions at an earlier stage. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.